It's almost the season of sales. Time to start listing your house. Next month, as we all know, is the most popular time of the year for it. It's the dream of so many people, a home to call your own. But what if your dream house is somebody else's <laughs> dream, too? About to turn your home sweet home into a nightmare. That is exactly what happened to young couple Jerry and Janice. With a young child and a baby on the way, little pranks at first, but then real danger. Strangers showing up, someone out for revenge against them, playing real estate roulette with their lives. Here's Chris Conley. Before it turned terrifying at the suburban house in sunny San Diego. Every week something was happening, something else was happening. You have no idea who it could be. Someone was trying to rape my wife. It's scary. Before this young couple took note of every act against them, before they took desperate measures to protect themselves from spikes on the fence. It's always on our mind. That stuff never goes away. To self-defense instruction. I would kind of think about like the escape route. Before all that, in the fall of 2011, Jerry Rice, a former competitive swimmer, was teaching special ed classes for kids with autism. Wife Janice Reuter was a microbiologist at a children's hospital. They had one child and another very much on the way. Right here. How big out to here were you at the time? Jim? Pretty big out, yeah. I was about, what, eight, nine months, mm -hmm. I think. They'd been saving for a house, and thanks to friend and real estate agent Renee Milton, they got one. This one-story house in a peaceful cul-de-sac. It's a wonderful place where everyone pretty much knows each other. People in the morning go for walks, they take their dogs out, they skip by the park on their way to school. At $779,000, the house scraped the top of their range, but... It was amazing, yeah. it was like, what, this is ours? We were gonna raise our family in the house. And we're going to start really soon. Yep. <laughs> a home is a big deal. To purchase a home is a huge deal. Excited for the imminent arrival of daughter Avery, Jerry says he barely noticed the unusual note that would be a kind of introduction to their nightmare, a note that came to the house in their first month here. It's basically said that uh, someone is willing to offer up to $100,000 to buy our home from us. $100,000 above the price that you'd pay mm -hmm. for it. I threw it in a cupboard. Our daughter was overdue. <laughs> Only then, something a little creepy. The house turned up again for sale on the real estate site Zillow under an obviously fake realtor's name, Jacques Arce. Jerry called me one day and asked me if I had listed their home on Zillow for sale. I couldn't understand who would take a home that we purchased and put it online. That was the start of an escalating harassment campaign. Next, $1,000 in bills for bladder control products and magazine subscriptions arrived. The mail stopped entirely. There was an online ad for a New Year's Eve party at their home. Tame stuff? Maybe. But the Rices got the ominous big picture. Someone was targeting them and wanted them out. Who was it that wanted them out of this house so bad? And was it just one person? Someone was trying to harass them to where they would leave this property. Next, an attempt to get the Rice's neighbors angry with them. A Valentine's Day car. The ideal way to share a little love with that special someone. Only Paul Abel, one of the Rice's neighbors, didn't see it quite that way because the card was sent to his wife, Tanya. Wait a minute, Paul, it wasn't from you? <laughs> it wasn't from me. What did the Valentine's Day card say, Tanya? It said, love, Jerry Rice. Paul hadn't even met Jerry yet. Yeah. He decided to change that in a hurry. He got mad, went right out the door and went and knocked on their door. He's not the jealous type, but he, he left the house in five minutes. Fast. Who's this guy that uh, I have a beautiful wife? She's mine. And uh, who is he sending her a Valentine card? In fact, Valentine's Day cards purportedly signed by Jerry had been sent to every wife in the cul-de-sac. You know, it's the same thing I said to everyone. I, you know, I'm really sorry we're getting harassed by someone. Someone obviously hates us. But who was the hater? With two children to protect, Jerry and Janice would never forget the jolt of fear they felt as a cop gave it to them straight. He said whoever was doing it was probably pretty sick. They were probably watching. And that sent chills down my back, having the police officer tell me that. You know, we need, to, we need to watch out for our children. It's scary. We were very suspicious of everyone. Jerry sprang into action. He locked the mailbox and set up surveillance. 
we didn't know who was messing with us and they could be coming up to our front door. So we put up uh, security cameras. This gate offered extra security, but week by week, their sense of siege worsened. What next? Who was watching? It all haunted Jerry. He became very distant and really focused on trying to protect our family. He would be up a lot during the night. Check all the uh, locks around the, door, the house and then check on the kids. What was it like one of those nights when you just sort of ask yourself, why is this happening to us? Janice asked that a lot. Why is this happening to us? And I was, I was more concerned of who was doing this and where they were going to attack us next. They turned to cops as they braced for the next attack, never imagining how shocking it would be. This is your picture, and these are the words underneath it. Carmel Valley Freak Show. Come see me during the day while my husband is at work, and we can get our freak on. You know, my stomach dropped. I was like, oh. OK, now my photo's on there. That's, that's very personal. And your home address, where your children were. Right. Then, while at work, Jerry got an urgent message from the police. They had to come back to the house because they had some information to share with us. And they wanted me there with Janice. Men had responded to that online ad and been in touch with someone pretending to be Janice. This is what one of them had been told. Just stop by any Monday, Friday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. I like the element of surprise. Someone pretending to be you. Right. Did it occur to you at that moment how much danger? Oh, you were yeah. In? Who was that strange man at the front door? And who was behind it all? By this time, they had growing suspicion. Remember that long forgotten note dropped off months earlier? from an unsuccessful buyer who was offering $100,000 above the Rice's purchase price for their house? Was that a clue? What was the name on that document? Kathy Rowe. When Janice searched Kathy Rowe on Facebook, she recoiled in horror. She'd seen that face before, at her front door, on Halloween. Immediately, I remembered her coming to our house, her and her daughter trick-or-treating. Coming up. Cops start looking at the bitter bitter. I have never seen anything like this in, in my time as a prosecutor. And Kathy Rowe, outbid, outraged, and out to get even. When I walked in, it felt like my house. Yeah, but it wasn't your house. Stay with us.